It's time for an update on the Snappy. So me and the Snappy have been through a lot. But before we get started talking about my journey with the Snappy, let's go ahead and go over what a Snappy actually is one more time. The Snappy is one of the most 3D printed printers out there. Outside of some motors, some switches, a hot end, and some electronics, it's pretty much all 3D printed parts. So the goal here is to have a Snappy print a Snappy, so it's self-replicating. But when I was building this Snappy, I made a few choices that didn't quite work out so well. I have also modified a few of the parts to help them fit a little better. There are two main issues that I ran into. One, the filament that I chose to use to print this Snappy, and two, this part right here. I didn't pay attention to the slop calculator. It tries to help you determine the tolerance of that printer so you know how much the printed parts will be affected. Now I printed my Snappy on a Prusa Mark III. You can almost get the wrench in the 00 slot. It fits just fine in .05, but after a few test prints, I decided to go with .1. It fits pretty well in point one with minimal play, and the parts that it turns out fit together really well. Remember, we're still talking about parts that are created for the original Snappy. And that slot value is important because all the Snappy files are in OpenSCAD. They are available as STL as well through the GitHub download. But in OpenSCAD, you can go to the config.scad file and scroll down a bit, and you'll see these settings right here. And this one is printer slop. That's where you enter the value of the slop calculator. So I punched in point one for all the new files that I created for my Snappy. You can also adjust gear backlash if you're having problems with that. I left mine zero and everything seems to be working pretty well at the moment. Now on Linux or Mac, this would probably be a lot easier to adjust. But if you edit this config file, you need to save it and you'll have to re-render your objects. So save your config file, go ahead and rerun these and that will update your part with that new slot value. It adjusts things like the rail size and the snap fit parts. And from here, then you can go to file and export your SDL with your new slot value. And here's the slot calculator that was printed on the Snappy. They do give you two bars. You can increment all the way from 00 to 0.45. And I can get the wrench in a couple of these different holes, but it actually does fit best in 0.45. So we went all the way to the end of the scale. But after a few test prints, I found that 0.45 seems to be working pretty well. So for the second Snappy, that's what I'm using in all my config files. And with that slot value, these parts actually move pretty nice. This is without any grease or sanding at all. This is printed in PLA. I mentioned that because we're going to talk about that in a second. Same for the Z rod sections, the lifting rods. There's a little bit of slop in there, but they turn pretty good, and they should be just fine after they're loaded. So after I got the slop values figured out, I reprinted the X and Y rails in PLA, and that really seemed to help with the quality issues that I was seeing. It's still not great, but it's way better than it was originally, and I think it is possible to reproduce a Snappy on a Snappy. But that's ultimately what we're going to find out. Now this Snappy is mostly PETG, except the parts I just changed out. And I think that was part of my downfall when originally trying out this design. This is one of the original PETG rails that didn't work out so well. And I think it's because of the characteristics of the PETG. It's just a little bit springier than PLA. PLA is a lot more rigid. So the motor sets down in here and the motor runs along in this track. And as you would get to the end of your movement, there'd be just a little bit of bounce. Coupled with a certain amount of backlash on that gear, that would cause this weird ghosting in the part that was really severe. It does move pretty smoothly. This has been greased and sanded quite a bit, but there was still just enough play to cause some real ugliness in those prints. So the extra rigidity that the PLA provides seems to help this issue greatly. And here's a look at the print quality that I'm getting. It looks like it's actually missing some layers, but it's not. It's just not stacking them very nicely. It's not great print quality by any means, but the parts do fit together rather well. There's a lot of noise because the printer is made out of plastic, but I'm pretty happy with them overall. So for some of the more rigid parts, PLA kind of won this one. Who would have thought? Now I did modify some of the files on the Snappy, including the original STL files. I will leave links to those upgraded parts in the description below. But for some of the other people building a Snappy, let's go ahead and take a look at some of those modifications. 
Now, my Snappy is technically a 3.1 version. It has the holder for the genuine V6 rather than the J-type hot end. And this is the part that I modified the most. Let me take the extruder motor out of here so you can get a better idea of what I did. So the first thing I did was drill out where the filament path goes. This is a genuine E3D V6, but it still has a PTFE tube that goes into the top portion of the barrel to help guide the filament. So I drilled this hole out so I could press fit that PTFE tube so it wouldn't be able to jump up and down, and that should make consistent extrusion a lot easier. I also beefed up this part right here. This is the part that holds the compression screw that allows you to put tension on your idler so it presses up against the filament. The original file, this portion was really thin and you could break it really easily with this screw. This one isn't going anywhere. I'll put it back together so I can kind of show you what it does. With this being quite a bit more substantial, you can really tighten that screw up and get a good grip against the idler and that extruder gear. I did go with a 3mm heated bed with a glass and Biltac sheet on top and I set it on top of springs so I could adjust it, but that did increase the bed height quite a bit. So I had to come up with a different way to trigger this end stop. So with the original snappy design, this screw would be the other way around. You would actually trigger it with the bottom of the screw. But I flipped it over so I would have extra clearance from this screw head to clear my bed. I also increased the size of these screws. I scaled them up about 3% so they'd fit a lot more snugly into this part. Believe it or not, I don't have to mess with the level on the snappy very much. I can use a baby step a little if it's out at all, but most of the time it's pretty consistent. And then finally I did upgrade the part cooling fan with this piece I found on Thingiverse. It attaches to the original clip-on E3D V6 hot end fan mount. It works pretty well. It's got a 30 millimeter V6 hot end fan on it. I have to put it up just a little bit higher so it doesn't clip the part. And what kind of 3D printing video would this be if I showed you a 3D printer and didn't have some time-lapse footage? So let's have a look. And that's pretty much all the changes I made just to get it to print a little bit better. I did upgrade to Marlin 1.1.9, I adjusted some of the speed settings, and it has a few more features than the snappy version does, so a link to that will be in the description below. I also tested Marlin 2.0 because it has backlash compensation. I was hoping that would help my print quality a bit, but all the testing that I did was pretty inconclusive, so maybe we'll visit that down the road a bit. But with the print quality that I'm getting on this machine right now, I do think it's possible to print a snappy on a snappy, and you'll be the first ones to know when I'm successful. Hopefully this update satisfied my fellow snappy enthusiasts. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching. How about Z? The one side of Z moves. Or are they moving in opposite directions? Don't break, don't break, don't break! <laughs>